We're gonna talk about some of the work that uh, Shell is doing. You know, she's been a member of our community, I believe since uh, 2017. And uh, she's doing some great things as far as uh, education and trying to put outreach out there as far as the world of STEM. But before I start, you know, going into details, you know, let's uh, start off with who Shella really is. Right now, she's currently an engineer at Mercer Research Center in Georgia, where she works on various aerospace contracts in support of sustainment and innovation. She enjoys dancing, singing, martial arts, and weightlifting during her free time. Uh, she received her Bachelor of Science degrees in aerospace engineering and physics from Tuskegee University in May of 2011 and a Master's of Science in the degree in systems engineering with a concentration in space systems from the Air Force Institute of Technology in September of 2016. Uh, Shella was commissioned into United States Air Force in 2011 through the ROTC program through Tuskegee University in Alabama. And she's been in the military first active and now is a reservist for a little over seven years. So like I said, she joined our community in 2017. But one of the great things about her, as far as how she really, really connects to this community and a lot of the outreach that we um, continue to do is that she balances all of this between being a mother and an active advocate of STEM um, with a nonprofit STEAM unlimited program where she develops events that incorporates arts into the sciences. Uh, she looks forward to continuing her knowledge and research and testing the feel of the upper atmosphere and beyond. So welcome, Shayla. So what I want, where I want to start is kind of the, the piece is I was going to go through as we were talking about the each aspects of what I do, but I'm going to just go ahead and get right into it and just show you some of the work that I've done, some of the behind the scenes, and uh, and at the end of this, want to talk about what I plan for the future. So for SEMA Limited, um, it is something that has been a baby that I I want to share science with the world, and I want to do it through so many different mediums. I love camera work. I love um, movies, TV shows, um, fascinated with makeup, I love to dance, and all those things. So, you know, I've dabbled in uh, different ways of teaching. I've taught uh, K through through middle schoolers, you know, in, in the science realm. So with that, you always have to be very creative on how you explain the sciences. So that's what kind of piqued this interest of STEAM Unlimited and, and coming up with ways to help educators incorporate STEAM or even STEM inside their classroom, and also helping students to engage more and really have that innovation piece. So some of the things that I'm going to show are, it's gonna be a combination of behind the scenes and, and, and kind of me and I, as I'm editing. So the citizen science piece of STEAM Unlimited, I have the pleasure and the honor to do it with International Institute of Astronautical Sciences. One of the things that I did come, um, I helped with one of the microgravity campaigns, and so this is this video. So, can you hear? Okay. So it's just like it's fun. Uh, we were doing some real science. It was, it was that the box in the lab was some students. They, one, the competition we was able to fly one of the students and also fly their experiment to get some get some data. I won't go, there's more of that. You definitely go on the IIS website to find more about that. But I really just wanted to say I was able to participate in that and help with that. And with helping with that science, I was able to do some science of my own within with the sense of um, IIS. I did something called Vection, or I did studies on something called which is the illusion of motion or uh, the sensation that you're moving when you're not really moving. And that is important because that's something that astronauts actually do um, in space. So it, it was fun to kind of take that on. And so really what I, how I attacked, uh, went about that, 
I did task saturation. And I thought it would be fun to add a little makeup. So I will say that I, um, oh, I played a video game. So this is me playing the game while we're in microgravity. Uh, the game, of course, is, you know, I want to think. It's cognitive. You know, when you, the illusion of self-motion is very cognitive. So I was like, oh, let me do a math game and let me drive and do math. Because that's what it, it was, um, that's what I was doing. Let me drive and do math while I am in microgravity. Uh, while I'm experiencing that that free falling effect, and as you can see, um, you know you're supposed to you're supposed to drive through the right mass number. Part of it was <laughs> being distracted of not just because I was in, in free fall, but also because you know trying to drive and then your your body's moving as I'm floating. So it's a combination of things, not just the 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 concept of the illusion of of self motion or being disoriented, because that's really what what they're um, looking at. Um, I think I did pretty well <laughs> as far as driving, you know, uh, they just coming up with a, a different ways of having task saturation uh, will be interesting. So this, I wanna talk about how my friends really helped me get that behind the scenes piece. Um, I, I just, anybody in IIS, anybody that's in my, in my, in my circle, I say, hey, I need someone to help me develop some some type of um, uh, educational education. So I have them jump, and I have them put their suits on, and I'll have them say words, and then I kind of do the editing, and I put it together, and I uh, try to kind of have that piece for, I want to develop enough content and materials for educators to bring back to the classroom that's not just space and this far off place, NASA, it's, and that's that citizen science piece that I'm talking about. You know, anybody, if you're not an engineer, if you're not necessarily a scientist, you can still be a part of that space science community, I, I believe, through citizen science. And, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer by trade, but I love the arts. So I, I find ways to kind of collaborate the two. So this is Star. She was a, a great team player. I was like, I need you to jump. And of course, as you see, you know, she kind of just, she, she follows, she goes along with it. Cause I'm like, I need you to do this because this is something to get kids excited about. And the, uh, the finished product is actually, it looks really cool. I'm still working on editing. Um, there's, editing takes a very long time. I use different apps. I use different um, um, tools to edit. And I also have my, my little team of beta testers, I'll say, to kind of let me, let, they let me know what they think. Uh, this is when I was in Arizona. And this was supposed to be an introduction of saying geology 101. Um, so it's just a lot of fun uh, recording and 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 things that I participate in. Um, this is me breaking a rock, talking about geology. I feel I feel with students. I feel with students. Uh, they you can have pictures and you can have um, even videos but sometimes when you're there when you're actually there doing the science and then you bring it back to the classroom and then you can speak to it I think it's it it allows them to have a more um, closeness with the science that's being done so I'm I'm an advocate of going out I'm like hey you want to learn about rocks all right let me go and figure out how I can go break some rocks open and I'm gonna either bring the bring some rocks back which I did I bring, I did bring some rocks back and uh, when I go into the classroom and I talk about it I'm not necessarily the expert in geology but with this particular video that I'm also still working on editing there were some experts in the field that were able to kind of speak on speak on that so um, this again kind of that piece going back into how um, STEAM Unlimited is and how you know, partnerships can work out so that we can all, we all have the goal of outreach and making, you know, science and technology equitable for any, any source of community. And a lot of times what I notice is that a lot of people have barriers because they're like, oh, I can't do that, or I'm not smart enough, or I don't know how to do math or it's too hard but i'm when actuality you know makeup is chemistry um actuality video games that's that's there's a whole so many facets that deal with deal with you know making a video game not just computer science um so i think and you have to have that artistic aesthetic visual ability to kind of say what does what looks good on screen so it takes more than just the the technology the the scientists and the engineers to to develop that well, I have, a, I have one question, and this is to reiterate what you were just talking about. I mean, a couple of days ago when we spoke and we talked about, you know, 
when you walk into a classroom and you start talking STEM or even talking to parents and you say STEM, they run away because it's, you know, unless you've been exposed to math, the disnomer, you know, that we were brought up to think that this is something that is, it is a really, really, really great occupation. But for some people, some people who are disadvantaged, some people who never really sunk their teeth into math, they run away from this stuff, not really realizing that, yes, it is about some of those things. But until we find a different way to present it, like you're doing, you know, like in your illustrations and actually using, you know, the resources that we have within the community to go out and actually do things like this and bring it back to the classroom, this is a way not just for young people, but their parents to see that it is not just about calculus. You know, it, it's not about just that. It's about things like this. So what you're doing creates such a tremendous opportunity for people who are, I would say disadvantaged, but when we talk about being disadvantaged, a lot of times we think about, well, it's a certain class of people or they have to look this way or they have to live somewhere else. Disadvantage in education comes in all spectrums. And somehow we have to try to find a way to reach everyone. You know, I, I, I tell people, you know, a lot of students, when I do my chats, they say, well, if math is a problem, you know what? Go take it in summer school, just go, Focus on that one thing in summer school and wrap your brain around it. So what you're doing is such an important part of STEM, space, everything that's going to move us forward. You know, and this is one about each one, teach one. And that is exactly what you're doing. We're so proud of you. So proud of what you're doing. Wait till the audience starts seeing your illustrations you know, <laughs> comic books and all of the things that I was just blown away of all the stuff that you've been doing behind the scenes. And I'm a person who's always looking at people's profiles and looking to see what they're doing and reaching out to them. And I can tell you that a lot of the stuff that you sent me, I was just totally, totally <laughs> blown away by your talent. You know, your, your talent needs to be on a big screen somewhere. You know, oh, thank you. Really, really, I, I got so excited when I was looking at it. So um, off my soapbox now, and I will continue, uh, let you continue. Go ahead. <laughs> I, know, I really appreciate that. I just, I will say that I kind of started this. Um, I've always been trying to find ways to really teach kids. <laughs> I've always been trying to find creative ways. I've literally, you know, just danced in the room so kids can pay attention. I'm like, hey, kids, look over here. It's science and, you know, math. Let's do some, you know, I've I've done everything you can think of to try to get them to pay attention and not just pay attention, but to retain the information. And, of course, it's not just about, you know, students. It's definitely, you know, older individuals that, you know, my age and older that are like, oh, it's too late for me. I can't participate in that in that field or in that community. I'm like, no, you definitely can participate. And I'm just like, don't ever say it's never too late. That's all, that's all I want to say. It's never too late. Um, so I, I, I hope that, you know, as I show these videos and, and later on, we'll kind of get into the comic book aspect, um, after we've kind of talked a little bit more about, you know, Steam Unlimited and not just, it's so much bigger than that. It's so much bigger than my, the nonprofit that, the, that I kind of started. I, I love that I've partnered with IIS. I've also helped work with um, the National STEM Academy and that's, this part right here, I'm gonna mute it. But for the purpose of kind of running through it, as you can see, like we we recorded this, the National STEM Academy in Georgia is uh, at the Museum of Aviation, mm -hmm. and all to have quick fundamentals. And I wanted to create simple science concepts and do videos on them. And there's tons of that on YouTube. Okay, there's tons. <laughs> but I want to do the quick concept, but my way, I want to do my way because sometimes there's always that little gold nugget that maybe the way I present it, the way I do it might be different. So it was fun. I really appreciate them. They are, again, 
my my uh, my community. I have such, I do have a really big support system, but also probably because I bother people. So Karen, look out. I might be saying, hey, we got some videos. We got some footage I can use for some editing. Got anything? So it's like, um, you know, the people in my community, they, no one asks questions. They jump on board. Um, you know, my husband, he definitely helped with some editing. It's just, it's great. And then, you know, eventually maybe I'll try to get my kids involved to try to help with some of that, some of the creative aspect of it. They are the uh, the beta testers, I'll say, on some of, if I'm looking to uh, see if younger audiences can retain the information and enjoy it, of course. Um, but yeah, this was, this was a lot of work. I think this one, it took, we did this in, I can't even remember how many hours, but I know I did not edit this. My husband edited it, and then I added some other aspects to it. So um, kind of outside of, you know, looking at the different avenues and who, who else participates. And the National STEM Academy has been a very a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of resource. Um, so it's just, it's not just me. It's my, my, my friends, my support system, and the people that just really uh, believe in me, I guess, if you could say. So this is also, um, there's a piece on the slide that I was talking about uh, along with the organization, you know, teacher development, uh, society, engaging the community. So this is this is an event at the uh, National STEM Academy, and you'll hear me talk about the people that have really, you know, helped me kind of uh, come on my show. But I get a lot of um, ideas and different ways of how to do it. Now, while while there is a, you know, you come, you look at things, you you hands on. I'm more of a. I think my thought and my vision is more movie production and TV show, kind of like you said, Karen. Um, like I remember the movie The Martian. I, that just kind of sticks with me. And for all the people that was like, does that really happen on Mars? What is it? Is there dust storms like that? Is there, you know, you know, does it rain? Can you grow potatoes? I was just, I was like, well, you know, and that causes that that research and that insight. And that's kind of what uh, the goal that I have. I really want to get into that production piece, that that creative piece, because I want to have people that wouldn't normally look the way of science to ask those questions. Um, and so, yeah, I try to have a little fun. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. So, you know, some things we'll say. Uh, going back to the the microgravity piece, uh, here it is. The so I have posted pictures of my nails on my Instagram or on the Instagram for um, Seam Unlimited. It's a conversation piece. Again, another medium at which we can start talking about the science. I think this is just the, you know, the planets and, and, and galaxies. I, one time I had my nails painted to the concept of, you, people that know me know, I say this all the time, finite element analysis. It was just the color coding that would happen when you deal with stress and strain on a certain um, airframe or object. So I just painted my nails that way. Oh, I didn't paint, I got them painted. I have the art concept, but then there's an artist that paints my, that, that uh, she's amazing and she does the work. And it's just a conversation piece. Like, oh, what's that? Well, let me tell you. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so, um, and young girls, you know, that is that is the biggest conversation piece. And then we start really talking about an introduction, that opening to 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 the engineering world or to the to the STEM world. Uh, and I I'm 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 overjoyed and excited when I can when I can share that and say, yep, it's not boring as the people. I guess society has made, you know, science boring and it's not fun. Like, no, actually, there's a lot of creative things that come about it. And I guess there are pieces that are challenging to the mind. But I am a person who believes anybody could learn anything. I am maybe a teacher and I teach all people from people. I've taught adult statistics that had to take a statistics class for that next step. And then I've taught children, you know, algebra. And I don't teach them the same way. So I... I I think that's kind of, again, kind of brought me to come in this, this creative piece of, of why I do what I do. Um, 3D printing is something that I'm definitely interested in more. And that's something I'm kind of teaching myself. I know a little bit about it, uh, but I'm, I want to be, I want to participate more in the 3D printing aspect, but I want to learn it so well that I can also share it because that's the future. 3D printing, we got computer science, coding. Um, another aspect of what I wish and the objective for the nonprofit is kind of re changing like the system of how we how what we learn in the classroom. Um, you know, 
a, I know that's a big thing. I've told, I've been told that that's a really big dream, if you will. But how we engage in STEAM in the classroom, the fact that we don't have computer science as big a deal in the classroom as it should be, the fact that you know, the the stuff that's coming up in the future, I really think that we should for it. Are, 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 it should be important for the teachers to teach it. And mind you, I'll tell you, the teachers, at least the ones that I'm around, are doing a really good job sticking with their curriculum, sticking with their standards that they have to stick to, but kind of incorporating that that science aspect, that science piece. Um, there's some, and that's again the teachers' workshops, again the the seminars. There, I've gone to educational workshops so that I can learn different ways to teach, or if I'm doing a summer camp, I also with this organization and kind of the the more the bigger picture piece, the production piece, the the visual arts piece, the comic book piece. Um, I I want to take what I've learned and now have a workshop for educators or homeschools or just students in general to say, hey, this is how you can kind of be creative and you like science. I, I've definitely met enough people that say that I started out with this degree or I started out with this subject. And I really wanted to do it, but I also love art or I also love dance. And I'm like, you can do both. Yes. Come up with it. <laughs> so, well, I, I wanted to share a quote that I found somewhere um, where you said, I, for one, would like to calculate the future of propulsion and participate in the research of the hyperdrive while in space with good waterproof mascara that doesn't smear. Do you recall saying that? Which is pretty cool. <laughs> I remember, so the story behind, <laughs> I'll say when I was working on it, um, those of you who have kind of gotten that higher education, uh, I decided to de defend my thesis. I decided to write a thesis and defend it. It was a lot of work. <laughs> like I can't even share it, it was a lot of work. <laughs> I, that was my first uh, request. I went to my advisors. I think I had like three advisors at the time. Uh -huh. And I had, they, it, you know, the way they make it seem, you can literally do anything you want within the realm of systems engineering. So my <laughs> master's um, is in system engineering with a concentration in space systems. And I was like, great, space systems. I have a book that's, you know, all about space systems and, and, and uh, objects in space, you know, Kepler's law, orbital mechanics, all that. So I was like, perfect, hyperdrive. I want to do, it's the very, very theoretical, and I want to do research and write a thesis on the hyperdrive. And I, and hopefully this is a, a little nugget for anyone that is looking to work for their master's and they're going to defend their thesis. A lot of times your thesis does not have to be this expanding, big discovery. It could literally be, this is all the things I found that don't work. And that's your thesis it does not have to be like, it does not have to say, these are all things I found. Don't worry, this is the solution to the problem. You can say, I did not, no, it was inconclusive. And these are all the things that I've done and, done, and that have found that have not worked. And that way, when someone else comes along, they can take your thesis and maybe expand upon that. It's all about generational. It's all about working together. So I was ready to do the hyperdrive research. And, and then my advisor was like, Oh, I wish I could record the conversation because one was like, there's not enough information to do this. I was like, right, because it's a theory. So I want to just research it so I can, you know, we could push this along here. And the other one was like, well, the and start, I think in his own mind was like, well, the engine will be too big for the amount of power. I was like, right, that's why I'm going to do the thesis on it and defend it. So anyway, uh, needless to say, um, I was not able to do my thesis on the hyperdrive. I did I did uh, put that out there that I wanted to do it, and I wind up doing it on um, radar systems. And as it as ionization is affected by our, our radar systems here on Earth, while it for me it wasn't as exciting as the hyperdrive, it was still very fulfilling because it was still uh, the concept of of um, kind of researching and understanding the world around us, and that's really what it's about. So you know, understanding the world around us. So yes, I really wanted to do that. Um, maybe one day. I'll try to get back into that. <laughs> As, uh, that was one of the things I wanted to do that for my thesis. <laughs> okay. So. Well, uh, did your mascara scare, uh, smear at all? Or, um... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Can you? Okay. Sorry. Yes. Uh, no. Actually, uh, no. <laughs> I My mascara did not smear at all um 
um, I think that was referring to also the, the during the microgravity. So I I put lips on the one of the task saturation part. So I played the video game. That was one. And then some of our other parabolic flights, I um. I put lipstick on and oh, I was not, I wanted to do the mascara. I was not able to do mascara because it was a level of risk of putting mascara on as you're floating. Um, so anybody knows, uh, that's put mascara on, you know, that could be a challenge. So so what were you um, trying to test out with the lipstick? So with the lipstick, I was trying to, I was trying, it was con uh, same concept of the task saturation um, that I wanted to do. Um, I, I, it was just another form of having, having the task saturation. So first it was cognitive, you know, when you're floating in the air, uh, not the air, but when you're free falling, that's why I want to use the right term. When you're, when you're experiencing that microgravity, when you're floating, um, like I said, the vection aspect of it is your, your cognitive, uh, it's distorted almost. So you have that, the, you have the illusion. So that cognitive distortion along with task saturation. So the video game was just the cognitive task saturation and the lipstick was just a, um, a physical form of the task saturation aspect of it. Um, if I could share my screen for, I could be present to share my screen. I wanted to show the slides. Yeah, thank you. I wanted to let you know this is the symbol for a simulator. We have patches. That's something that, again, that artist piece, that artist aspect piece of, I wanted it to be, I'm actually in my mind, fashion, right? I'm coming up with the concept of what the uniform, if you will, will be for people that, you know, volunteer and help with the organization, but that's future future as this, this organization grows. Cause I think it's how, how you, how you walk into a room is very important as well. Like I will, Art, art is in science, you know, you can, how you represent yourself and how you carry, it's, I think it goes along with that. And, um, yeah, I think it goes along with that. So I wanted to go over, kind of, you saw the videos, you saw all the cool stuff. If you just look at the mission of the organization, it's th the videos you saw, building, you know, science literate generation, you know, resources for teachers, and empowering edu um, educators that can incorporate that science piece into their classroom um, and expanding minds of the young of the youth and K through university. So I'm definitely trying to have that mission with not only the videos you saw, but also, you know, partnering with other organizations, partnering with anyone that wants to expand upon that on the higher level. I always say the STEAM in art is not the it's the it's the uppercase A because I'm talking about productions, I'm talking about full on fashion, uh, you know, changing, I'm talking about makeup, I'm talking about dancing, whatever you can think of, visual arts, uh, whatever you can think of. And I'm not the expert or the, nor am I talented in all those fields. So anyone else that is talented in those fields and can kind of bring that piece together, again, is to for the community for engaging and for, you know, just developing a better way of life. And we kind of, we went over these objectives from those videos, so. Um, same thing, you know, in the field, citizen science, gathering that data and getting, uh, and then sharing it with the community. I talked about that seminar piece. You saw some of those videos of just kind of going out uh, and engaging in the community and engaging in with educators so that they can, so that they can bring it back, not only back to the classroom, but also when there's science demonstrations. You know, I really want to get back. I used to do science demonstrations when I was at, um, when I, when I was in college and during the summer, I would go to some place called Fort Discovery, it was in Augusta, and I used to do science demonstrations. That was also my peak of performing, if you will, the performance aspect of science. So I really wanna get back into that performance aspect of science, because it's really, it's a lot of fun and it's fun to engage with the, with the young people. So this is, a, this is actually pretty cool. This is a map um, of uh, the, like, the different, the Mars destination map and teachers, educators have this and this is trying to have the opportunity to have more educators to uh, be able to have this for their classroom so that kids can have that piece so even if it's not a part of their curriculum they have it out on the floor and maybe they're making 
uh, staying within their standardization, staying within where they're how they're supposed to teach, but then that is out. So the kids can look and say, and I start asking the question and it doesn't go against the time. I, I do notice, and again, like a passion of mine of just really being that, that, that service to the educator is, you know, what else can I do to make your job easy? How can I develop lesson plans for you? And what, what kind of cool, creative ways can you pique that interest of the student? Maybe you can't teach it, but you can have it out. So I thought that was pretty cool that this is a map of um, the of Mars, uh, the different uh, elevations, and you just have it, you can just have it out. Or in the gym, there's, there's some as big as they can have it in the gymnasium. Uh, so kids can just explore. That coding piece, I wanted to, when I was saying, talking about engaging with the audience, this is the time that I went to the library and I just did a course or a little mini lesson on computer science and coding. And this was the, the non-computer non, uh, using, using the coding aspect, just understanding algorithms and steps and you know, commands and who's the, who's, who's, who's the user and how, how, does, how it goes as you're saying the different commands and how algorithms work. So this was a lot of fun. And again, this was just the community. I went to the library, I said, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do. And I hope this encourages anyone else that wants to go into the community and wants to kind of be that advocate for education. Our education system is very strict. And this is, and I, and I'm like, okay, well, you have a lot of advocates. And again, that citizen science piece, go out, if you have the knowledge, go to your local library and say, hey, um, I can, I know this stuff and I can teach this. Can we have an event? That's exactly what I did. Of course, I did it under Steam Unlimited, but it was just, it was a lot of fun. The parents had a lot of fun. Uh, the kids were engaged and had a lot of fun. Uh, so I I do plan on getting back into this as things are, are opening back up. And uh, now we get into the comic book piece is something I, uh, it's called Nebulous Creations. It is something that I was just playing around with. And again, me sitting back trying to think about how can I be, how can I be creative and teach? Because I, I that even if I'm just sitting there teaching on a, a, in front of a board or in you know in front of a camera, I need that creative piece for myself as well. Like I'm proud of some of my work as well. I'm like, oh man, I did a really good job. And a lot of people that know me, a lot of my friends and family know I have a lot of energy. And so I need somewhere to put all the energy. <laughs> so I, I'm probably perfect to teach second grade because I'm just, you know, I'm all, oh, all over the place like them. <laughs> but um, so I will, these are some of the characters that I've come up with. This is, uh, so I'll kind of go into how I came up with the characters and almost like, I guess the storyline of this <laughs> is really one day I took a picture with a, uh emoji with the with the me emoji with the, where you can have the the face and the different um to have the different facial features and i was like oh that looks cool i wonder what it looks like with this filter i wonder what it looks like this filter and after that it's kind of like i just started creating from there and then of course you know i can never leave the science out so i i definitely had that in and of course we have a protagonist we have some you know the uh, our hero and then we have you know the support so so I wanted to share my the first comic I guess I came up with on I have this on YouTube with like sound and more so a visual effect of it. So this is just kind of the the piece without the sound. In the YouTube video, you'll she hears like the doorbell ring, and then she answers the door, and of course you know it goes it starts from there, and you know it's all like cool superhero science comic book movies. There's always a portal you know, and it's something always going wrong. So I was like, oh, kids, you know, I know kids love their comics and they love, you know, that sci-fi. So I, I instantly went for that. And, um, and you know, that, that funny piece, that, that the piece to kind of make you laugh. Cause when you laugh about something, I've noticed, you know, you can retain it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going to the next, uh, the next aspect, just introducing different characters. Now, mind you, all these characters are me just changing out the face emoji and editing and filtering and layering and and uh, that's how i was able to do this i and myself cannot draw i am not the expert on drawing but i have a visual uh, i have it in my head on how i want a scene to look if you will and then i kind of 
I write it out and then I play with it a little bit and then I, that's how I come up with going from one piece to another. So. Yep, so of course, as you saw the porter open, we got to stop it, you know, can't give up now, confidence, let's do this. <laughs> So, and I will say when I showed, I did show, oh, I showed middle school. I had a middle school uh, class that I did summer camp with and it was talking about innovation. And I showed them the comic. And of course they're like, that's so cool. What is this? You know, they love all the stuff. And then any, so I would say middle school and lower, they all just was enjoying it. So that was that piece that kind of captured their attention. And then like later on in the comic book, in the comic, you know, in as we go through uh, the different episodes, I talk about states of matter. I talk about um, uh, there are there is some sci-fi aspect to it, like a spark, and if a spark, if energy is over here, it's taken from somewhere else. Was act, which actually is that's the fact. But the other part where dragons or you know come out, that's not true, obviously. <laughs> so that they just cared about the dragons, but they still retain like oh energy transferred from one sec if it's if it's over here, it's, it came from somewhere else. And then matter, you know, kind of talking about the states of matter and we kind of get into that. But that is what that comic book uh, kind of piqued the interest. And I was like, oh, behind the scenes, like I said, it's the me emoji and then I use a filter. And then I do some other editing on an app where I can take stuff out the background. Um, I've seen some stuff on certain um, platforms where they'll show how they'll stretch a picture out or they'll like delete a picture or out of the background. I've, it's something that is something similar. So it's not just a filter. I have to do some work to make it look the way I want it to look. Um, and of course, the early ones where the shadowing was off. So the later comic books look better than the earlier ones or the episodes look better than the early ones because I found out that shading is very important if you want to make it look real. Uh, this was a really cool. Um, I was asked to share um, at the Abington Foundation. Um, they asked me to contribute to their um, to their activity book that they do every year. And I did come up with I did share some other aspects on the page, but I think, you know, I was like, oh, I'm just color of, of a citizen science. And I really wanted to say commercial spacesuit testing because that's exactly what that is. It's commercial. It is not NASA, it is not any big corporation. And I, I want to kind of have that vocabulary piece in there so that that's something that they can retain. Um, so of course it's it's me in, in the Final Frontier Design uh, pressurized suit, um, obviously helmet up and I filtered. And then I had to, again, to do that editing piece to kind of get rid of some degradation in the picture so that it still look like me, but you could also still color it in the in the lighting and shading. And it's just, it takes a lot of work to sometimes, sometimes I can finish that really quickly because I've done it so much, but sometimes it takes time because of the, 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 the detail of the pieces and how the shading comes about. But for real, this one was really filter and then clearing out some spaces so that people could color it in. <laughs> so this was actually a cool uh, 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 project to do. <laughs> and this definitely brings the part of yeah. being able to it use. It brings us to all the things that I do when I'm kind of like, this is my my zen, if you will. So me creating stuff is is work, but I also kind of zone out and it's, it, it brings me to a different place from all the engineering and technical stuff that I do. It brings me to a place, it's relaxing. I enjoy doing it, so I have a lot. I There's an Instagram that I have, I'll say Nebula's Ambiance. It's just something I like looking at nice serene pictures. This picture is a picture I took when I was in Arizona and I was climbing up the um, the crater and it was just a beautiful serene. Uh, oh, and, this, the, and we also went to the Grand Canyon. So that too, this is the Grand. So it was just a beautiful serene picture. And, um, you know, I have a lot of, of course, you know, all of us space and science lovers, I have a lot of space stuff. So I, I just posted, I want to share it because I enjoy it so much. So I want to share. Um, we talked about Creations Nebula, Nebulous, which is the comic, and I kind of, on the Instagram page, I go a little bit more in detail of behind the scenes and some character concepts, and um, it has a link to the YouTube if, if you're interested in seeing what, you know, happens and how, how things play out. And then um, the nonprofit 
has its uh, Instagram page more so on the educational informational side some some behind the scenes on how I go about uh, doing some of the videos and and just concepts so it was it was I have <laughs> I, I don't have them all on one I guess page Instagram because they have their own purpose so I, I think I'll keep it all separate because Seema Limited it has its objectives and as we talked about earlier the comic book has its own thing. And then of course, when I want to zen out and just really look at something nice, I have that. So, and then of course my page is just fun. And I talk, and I still have that science piece of it. Uh, the the nail picture of E equals MC squared and some of the other um, artwork on my nail. Again, that conversation piece, I will find ways to talk about science. I don't, if I put makeup on, I'm going to put something up, I put my nails on, I have earrings that I have um, that are stars. I will find a way to, for someone to talk to me about science, something scientific. <laughs> and of course the future initiatives. Oh, I don't have it up here, but um, there's a, so future, future initiatives for um, Steam Unlimited. I'm working with another woman, um, which to her, her business is called the Mighty Squad, which is a wonderful activity. She does activity books, she does color books for young people, really trying to get people to see what other jobs that different people from different communities can be involved in. And I've partnered with her to do the science aspect. So there's science activities in the book that you do and the science activities directions that you do outside the book. And it's really exciting. It's so I would definitely say look out for that. Um, there's some stuff that I haven't seen anywhere. We made sure we kind of did our research in the activity book that I haven't seen anywhere else. So looking forward to to having that um, to share that. And that is that is that is what I have. <laughs> it's well, a lot, and it's a whole lot more. Oh, she's here! Yay, Teresa! Teresa is awesome that she's here for the wise call, but definitely looking out for some of the stuff that we're um, uh, going to do in the future. But I, I, there's a lot more, but you know, I feel free. I, I want people to be able to reach out if they have questions or want to contact me. But if there's any questions now, I'm definitely, I'm here to, to take them. So I was, uh, you know, when you were showing the, uh, the actual photo in the, on, in the commercial spacesuit and actual drawing of it, you know, my, my thought was, you know, there's STEM right there. You know, we're using technology tools, you know, to create art. So, mm -hmm. so there you go. It, it's not always about numbers. You know, it's not always about the math, but the vision and trying to figure out the right tools to convey that message. So I, I think it's just unbelievably awesome uh, of what you do. Uh, one of the things that shocked me the most is that you said, hey, I'm not an artist. I don't know how to draw. I was like, huh, what? That 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 kind of blew my mind. Because in, in looking at all of your creations, you know, I'm sitting here saying, man, I wish I had that talent of how to do all this stuff. And you're saying that you're actually using T in STEM technology to create the E in STEAM art. <laughs> Yes, look, I never thought about it like that, but hey, that's what it is. Yes. 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 So, so no one gets left behind. No one. Because in STEM, there's a place for everyone. And this is, and that is the message that I'm getting out of this. In STEM, there's a place for everyone. And uh, you are definitely building that bridge, you know, to bridge that gap in all of the folks who are, as we talked about the other day, sitting on the sidelines, you know, um, figuring, oh my goodness, this is, uh, you know, this is just too much for me. So, so yeah. So anybody in the audience right now who uh, is wanting to open up their cameras and their microphones and, uh, and ask Shelly any questions, you know, like, like me, I, I had a lot and uh, <laughs> this is just, this is just really awesome. So um, if you have any questions, and I'm, I'm sure that you do, you know, turn on your camera, turn on your microphone, and uh, fire away. Anna, I know that you have put a lot of stuff in the chat. So oh, yeah. uh, I, I, I am going to pick on you right now. 
and you're going to come up and you are going to tell us about this awesome relationship that you have with Shayla because you put a <laughs> lot of stuff in there. So let's let's hear what you've got to say. <laughs> hi everyone. Hi, uh, hi Karen. It, it it is an honor to to be with you and and uh, Shayla. I love you. You are amazing. And my question to you is, uh, oh, by the way, I was at the top of the crater with you in that beautiful image that you show. Remember, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Shayla, um, I would like to know what is your inspiration? How can, how do you merge science with technology, with engineering and with kids' curiosity, you know? Please give us uh, some tips and uh, a good recipe. Um, and and I, 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 I put in the chat, why don't you speak Portuguese, Sheila? Right, why? Right, right on. <laughs> remote meetings in, in Portugal. Uh, but um, please give us the recipe. You are uh, truly amazing. I would like to know, give us some tips to, to, to try to, when, when we do our STEAM activities, to try to, have your inspiration, your Shayla inspiration inside of us. Oh, Anna, I love you. <laughs> You're so awesome. Um, and again, like I said, the team, the team that I have, I will say even before I had kids, because they're a good example of, okay, what do I need to do to keep their attention? I will say that just from, I do have a passion for teaching. I think it's just a natural, thing that I just, I have. So the inspiration comes from, I look, I talk to a lot of young people. I love mentoring, I love teaching. So I talk to a lot of young people and I say, what are you interested in? Even the ones that are interested in the science are kind of very, um, there's no thinking outside the box, if you will. So I do try to engage in that. So when I find a piece that, that kids are, you know, excited about these days. So again, inspiration of comic book. Kids love reading comic books. Kids and adults love it. So I was like, well, fine, I'll create a comic book then. Movies. Everybody loves movies and YouTube is the is the new is the new thing. I was like, fine. With my limited production skills and equipment, I'm gonna create something visual. <laughs> um, so it's just really looking at the the demographic and the community that you're talking to and saying, what do you like? Uh, that's and then I go I take that and I make it my own um, I do I love visual, if I could draw I would I think I would be having uh, masterpieces but because I can't draw I have to create use other avenues to create it so the inspiration is the community and kind of going into the second grade classroom going into the middle school classroom and saying what y'all doing <laughs> so. that's it Aww. well thank you Anna thank thank you uh, for that question um, Kevin, um, I don't know if you're still on, but I know that you uh, try to ask a question or make a couple of comments earlier. I, I don't know if you want to come back up on screen and uh, probably ask a question or share your enthusiasm while you're here. Uh, can you see me now? Uh, no, I can't see you, but we can hear you. Oh, okay. that's... <laughs> this technology, um, uh, <laughs> First off, I just want to say I'm so glad that um, I was invited into this forum to hear this talk because I believe that people can learn anything. And it's not its not that um, what I loved about what Shayla is doing is she is incredibly creative and she understands, ask people what their interests are and then adapt your teaching to their interests. One of my favorite things is languages, as Shayla already knows. And I believe that as long as you can, if, if you're not tone deaf, you can learn any language. I just tell people, stay away from the people who tell you that it's impossible to learn something when you haven't even tried. Exactly. So, awesome. and even in terms of the demographic, it's like what I've learned is that people have learning styles. And one of the things that Shayla demonstrated in this pre presentation was bringing in all of their ways of learning into the presentation so people don't get bored and fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So it, it's powerful. I, I, I really, I, I'm inspired by this presentation, I have to tell you, and uh, we'll All talk right. afterwards, but <laughs> you, you just knocked me out for a loop. Um, well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much. 
Uh, let's move on to Tom. He asked about the software and um, the comic books. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hi, fine. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and we can see you. Go ahead. Good. Hi, Shayla. How are you, how are you doing? Hi. Hey. Um, yeah, I was really impressed by um, what you were doing with those comic books and uh, just thinking that could be a great way if you could figure out you know a, a tutorial or something on how to make those i mean the comic book content is great for the kids but the actual process of making those i think the kids could learn a lot from I mean, oh, okay you said you know i can't draw um a lot of you hear that from a lot of kids too uh, hmm. but if they had something like this where oh it's just an emoji and then you put it in i don't know but whatever i'd like to know what you use for the filters, what you use to to put it together into the final uh, artboard products, um, just just the process on on how you went about making it in, in detail. Oh no, that's awesome! I, and I will say on the Instagram, it, it I go a little bit more in detail, but even kind of saying it verbally, because um, I don't have it on this computer or on my phone, because it's it, you know it's like in a different um, hard drive. But basically, if I could say, take a picture, and then there's different apps that have different filter options. Those of us know about the technology. So you have Facebook and you have Instagram. Instagram, some of their, you know, their filters on the uh, on the stories, they have more, or it's a little different than the ones that are on the stories for Facebook. And sometimes I screen I screenshot what I want to some extent. If 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 the app doesn't have the filter or if the phone doesn't have the filter I want, so I'll screenshot it. And then there's an app called it's the Magic Eraser app. It's like been my I use that a lot, and that's how I kind of adjust. So there is a a, a visual hands-on artistic piece that I have to also do. But I feel like if I have the foundation of it, I can kind of finish it. So screenshotting using what I have. So like I said, the Facebook and Instagram have different filters and there's different apps that have different filters. Clips is an app. Uh, Yvette will know this. I will say I would use a lot of apps and I test out a lot of apps. So I'm, I'm like, I'm the app queen. Um, so Clips is a filter that has that cartoon app uh, to it. And so it has different um, um, options. So definitely like I will, I can definitely, Tom and anyone, I can share all the tools that I use, the apps that I use, I don't have, you know, I think that everybody should have access to all this and be creative in any type of way so that more people can be creative and more people can have access, of course, for me to the science piece. So I can compile the apps that I use and how I use them, if that will help. Um, and um, definitely have that that layering piece of how I go about creating a comic book. Um, yeah, does that, does that help? <laughs> Yeah, that's very good. That'd be very helpful. Okay, I'll definitely share that. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for your question, Tom. And uh, we're getting close to that magic hour. Uh, I just want to give anyone else a chance to uh, to ask Shella any questions that you may have. Um, this event is being recorded. So uh, at some point, we'll send out a message letting all of you guys know uh, where you can find it and when it's going to be posted. That way you can go back over it and um, try to absorb all of the great things that she uh, introduced us today. Because for me, it was an introduction. It was not about, hey, I already knew this. A lot of things that you showed just totally blew me away, you know, mm -hmm. especially the part that, hey, I'm not an artist. So <laughs> this opens a lot of doors to a lot of folks. Um, but in closing, I wanted to ask you, is, is there anything that you specifically need from this community to help you move forward or further along with your projects? How can we assist you from this community to move further? Um, I would say just go watch the videos, go, go to the Instagram, comment on them, like them, go to, you know, YouTube links that are on the site, watch it, give me, it's more so I want feedback, how I can be better. Because as Tom said, you know, I want to share how I went about creating um, the comic books, how I went about editing those videos. I have, you know, some people on here that I know I've edited some of their videos for them, but I want to show, if you have, if you want to learn, I want to show you how 
you can also edit the videos the way you want. Um, so the way the help to help me is giving me feedback, real feedback on, you know, uh, this was a terrible pre uh, how you presented this, or this was great. I love this. I don't want all the, I don't want just the good stuff. I want the really critique, the critique aspect of it, because I want to get better. And then share it with your friends, share it with everybody you know in your community. Anna, translate it and then share it with the students. <laughs> so, um, I will. Yeah, I, will. I just. Yeah, so just, you know, share it with, you know, someone, share it with five people and have them go look on the YouTube and Instagram, comment, like, and follow and all the things. <laughs> so that's how, I feel like that's how it can help and, and providing feedback. Oh, I will say, because of the, you know, the, what's coming out for the, the activity book, educators, I really, if there's educators in your community that need resources, need lesson plans for STEM, I'm definitely here for that. And I want to help. It's free. I try, I try to find every way possible that I can make it free. So of course there will be, you know, a point where, you know, donations will be needed for the STEAM Unlimited organization. Right now I just do everything myself, but right. Um, but I definitely want to make it free for educators, free for, for students. You know, I, I just, that piece of just giving your time and word of, and going out there and being my marketing team, basically. <laughs> That's how you help. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Shayla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, this has been, yeah. Um, I'm sure everybody else who tuned in today is pretty blown away with all of the stuff that you've done. You know, pretty much a one woman show. And I, I, I know that you had co-conspirators like your husband and I assume your kids will be a part of all of this but know that uh, we're standing with you, behind you, the side of you, whatever it is that you need from this community, uh, we will be here to support you. And um, you. you're welcome. And on behalf of uh, the community, thank you again. And uh, for everybody tuning in today, thank you very much for tuning in today. And um, we'll be finalizing you know, this video and we'll be putting it out along with the links that Shayla is going to provide to us. So you too can be part of the marketing plan to uh, show educators, uh, young people, libraries, uh, your schools, um, everything that she's doing and how they can uh, jump on board and spread the word of, of what she's doing um, in the arena of STEM and STEAM. Thank you very much, Shayla. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. You did. You were awesome too. So, oh, thank you. <laughs>